Happy Tuesday, everyone. Pam Savage with Young at Heart Creations. It's been a few days since I've been on here with 4th of July weekend and contractors remodeling in the room next to me. I've had to kind of take a little mini vacation, I guess, <laughs> but contractors just left and listen. It's quiet. It's quiet again. No saws, no hammering. Um, and so we get to do a live. Um, I will tell you we're expecting some more storms here in Texas. So, and my husband's going to be on a Zoom call here in about 15, 20 minutes. So fingers crossed that we don't lose our internet service um, that we can stay on. But this is what we're going to do tonight. Uh, this is just a clipboard from, uh, see I got this one at Walmart. So this one came from Walmart. And it's just uh, plain, it was plain brown. I've already painted the other one or I'd show you just, but just plain brown. Hi, Crystal. So um, we're gonna do some uh, Mod Podge in tonight. And I started to say decoupage, same thing, but just Mod Podge brand. So this is a napkin and I've done a little bit on the back of this one. So I'm gonna show you on another one that I've base coated the process and then we'll actually do the painting on this one, but it'll be the exact same process. Now that looks like black, but it's not. It's navy blue and green uh, because the background of this is navy blue and green. Thanks, Miss Crystal. Um, so that's what we're gonna work on tonight. But I wanted to show you some other things that I've been working on. I have been working so hard on coming up with some new ideas and some things to do. Um, so we are gonna be doing some Mod Podge, but we're gonna be doing a lot of Christmas things in the next few weeks because I'm already in Christmas mode. Uh, but look at these pretty napkins I found. I ordered on Amazon for fall. So we'll do something with that. And then um, February, I bought all these Dollar Tree um, hearts in February because we were going to have a uh, February paint party and we were gonna redo the back of them uh, in a different style of heart. Well, thank you, COVID, it got canceled. Hi, Jerry. Uh, so it got canceled, so I was stuck with all these Dollar Tree hearts. So I thought, what am I gonna do with it? So um, I've been working on a couple of things for, for that, and I think that's probably what we'll work on uh, next Tuesday. But let me show you what I've done and see what you think. <clears throat> Okay, so here's what it did look like. So my tip for you, my tip at Tuesday, is when you get something like this, don't always look at it the way it is. See how it's standing up like this? Or this is upright. Hi, Marina. So think outside the box. That's my tip. When you get something, look at it from all different directions. What would it look like that way? What could we do with it? What could we do with it, um, you know, upside down? There's just so many different things that you could uh, do with it. And you could change it different heart styles back here. You could even uh, napkinize it. Miss Tracy, that's her term and that's what I use all the time now. Napkinize, uh, like we're gonna do Mod Podge. Um, but this is what I decided to do with it. With For this one, I turned him into a Santa. Let me see if I can hold him up a little better for you. So I've turned him into a little Santa. And I think that's what, hi Miss Miss Mama, I started saying Miss Peggy, <laughs> Miss Mama, hi Cindy. So this is what I did, I painted the back of it white. I may go back and paint the back of it red, just because when you take the love off of it, it does leave some little spots, and I think the red might cover it up a little bit. It's not bad, it's just some little rough spots. So I might go over it again in, um, in red. But that's what I did with that one. So we may paint this next week. Um, show you how a couple of different ways you can do his beard. This one was just pounced on, but we'll we'll show you how we're going to do that. So went from this to from this to this. It'd be cute even to put a little jingle bell. I, I don't know. There's just so many different things that you can do with it. So I'm going to hop on a couple of times. Not really painting, but just to show you some things that are coming up that we're going to be doing. And um, this also I did years ago, years ago for my mom. Uh, this was a, a chunky piece of wood, a one by, and did kind of the same thing um, with the heart that way. So, and this is a good little shelf sitter when you do the one bys. They really sit well on the shelves. So let me put Santa aside. 
I saw something on Facebook today. Um, only 25 Mondays until Christmas. Cannot believe that. <laughs> but it's here. So I do have some other things that I purchased. And I'll show you what we're going to do with those uh, next time I get on live. But I also went to Michael's. They were having a 70% off sale. And I'm always using buttons. and But sometimes I have a hard time finding the right color. So I got a package of these buttons. They were on sale for $2.00. There's a hundred pieces in them. There's different sizes. So that way I can paint them whatever color I want. So I was tickled to find those. So I found all kinds of little bargains after I uh, finished taking care of our little grand dog. Okay, so we're gonna start with, again, this is what we're painting tonight. Uh, just a simple clipboard. And I have dry brushed it on the back. <clears throat> and y'all see me dry brush several times, but we'll try to do it on the back of this other one. Kind of like the shows when they're cooking and they'll show you how to cook and then all of a sudden they magically pull one that's finished out of the oven. Well, that's kind of what we're going to do tonight. <laughs> so, so this one, I'm going to use a different floral uh, for this one. But I also got some, um, let me show you this one. I got some scrapbook paper. I couldn't think what to call it. Won't that one be cute? And then on the back of it, we'll paint some things on it. So I got some. Several little things like that that we're going to do some things with. But let's get with it before the storm. I was told there were supposed to be some more storms. I have not looked at the at the radar to see what's going on with it. But this is the napkin we're going to do tonight. And I think this would be cute for teacher gifts. Anybody that really office. I've got one that a, a sweet friend gave me that I use all the time. So we're going to be using matte Mod Podge. Don't like the glossy. I've tried and tried to use it, but it just does not dry. It stays sticky two years from now. It'll still be sticky unless you put another coat of this over that, which I've got the outdoor um, Mod Podge, and it's very sticky. But once it dries uh, and just, you know, sticky to the touch, I'll put a coat of this over it, and then it's good to go. So that's what we're going to do tonight. So let's see if I can get it open. I did hit pound it with a knife before we got started. I do like to get the wide mouth Mod Podge because y'all know I like to use my large brush. The small ones, the brush doesn't fit down in it good. Um, the bristles get all kind of messed up. So I just take this, I already had some of this, so I just pour it into my big one. Sometimes you can find the smaller ones on sale. They're easier to find sometimes than the large ones. So I, it, when and that's the case, I just get it and and just pour it in. Okay, so to separate your napkin, those of you that have never done the Mod Podge, most of them are two ply, but you can run into three and four ply. So you only want the top ply of the, the napkin. Hi, Kim, or Kimberly. I'm sure you probably go by Kim, but thank you so much for hopping on. And guys, um, I did post a notice or a post on the Facebook, but I haven't really been on here live since. I did speak with the venue uh, for the painters event on August the 28th that I'm trying to put together. So uh, they have allowed us to extend the deadline to paint that, um, I'm, to paint that, <laughs> to have the event, the registration, they have let, allowed us to go to um, August the 1st. So it is not too late to register. I have, um, 14 people right now. I need 19 more in order to make it work. So fingers crossed that we can do that. Um, so please keep signing up. If you're not coming, let others know. Um, if you are the uh, first one to get five people to sign up, whether you're coming or not, but you get five people to sign up, you will, you will receive this um, sunflower. It's about a, let's see how large it is. It's about a 21 inch. So it's a pretty big guy. So if you're the first one to get five to sign up, whether the party makes or not, whether the event makes or not, if you get five people to sign up, I will send this to you in the mail. So there's that. Lay him over there. 
you can put napkins on just about anything with Mod Podge. Metal, glass, wood, um, just about anything. Okay, most of the napkins, or a lot of them, they will have a banded edge around. You can just feel it, it's kind of like braille. I mean, you can feel it, that's what's keeping the napkin together. So we want to separate, I think this one's just a two plot, but the best way to do it, now you can take a pin and kind of pick it and try to get it away, uh, separated that way. Hi, Dietra. I'm so glad it's got to be extended. I'm definitely going to sign up after my trip next week. Yay! And I think Dietra's going to try to come see me next week, maybe. Um, okay, so the best way is I washed my hands, and it's your spit, so nobody else's germs. And just pull it apart, and look how easy it comes apart there. It sticks to your fingers and just pulls apart. You want to be careful, you don't want to rip it. I'm not going to need the bottom part. Okay, since this is just a two ply, that's all I had to do. But remember, some of them have three and four ply, so you'll need to take each ply away. Now, the napkins are very, very thin. Whatever color you put it on, that's the color it's going to pick up. So if I painted this turquoise, it's going to have a turquoise background that comes through on this, which you don't want on this one. Now, some things you may want that, but on this one, we just want the napkin part to disappear and only the colors to show. So to do that, you need to have a white background. I've already base coated this one white on both sides. Now, you could put a napkin on uh, both sides. You could just use a napkin on both sides and not paint anything on the back. But for this one that I was doing, um, that I did the other night, I want to, to do some flowers on the back. And I've just crisscrossed navy and green to pull that out of um, this the napkin colors. It looks black, but it's navy behind it. I did paint it white, though. So all the colors came true on the napkin. If it were any other color, the color underneath is going to overtake whatever the napkin is. And for something, that, that works great. Okay, so we've got our napkin separated. Let me set it down here so this fan doesn't blow it away. And I'm going to bring you down. I'm planning on the 15th or 16th. My birthday is the 13th. I'm, oh, I'm excited too. Remember, I'm under construction, so my house is a little out of sorts, but you're welcome to come. I cannot wait to see you. And I think Judy might meet us here too, Judy Logston. I also wanted to tell you something else. Uh, Peggy Wilson, I don't see Peggy on here right now, but I did a little drawing this morning uh, just for some anybody on here just to send some happy mail. Peggy Wilson, you will be receiving some happy mail, so if you will, private message me your address, and I will be sending that out sometime next week. So let's get started. Hi, Susan. So if you're a newbie on here and you've never been on here before, let me know. Um, I've been talking to several new people because I've been sending out so many invites to our painters event and already have gotten to meet so many new ones just through Instagram and, and just through talking. So that's been very exciting for me. So I can't wait. I hope it makes so that we can see everybody in person and get to really have a good day together. Okay, so let's get going here. And tell me, if you're new on here, tell me where you're from. And if this is your first time to watch, guys, I am up to, I have my first video uh, was viewed over 500 times. I've got two of them, actually, just in the last week that were viewed over, um, sorry, over 500 times. And I am almost, I'm at 471 followers. So I'm so close to 500. So when we get to five, oh, North Carolina. Um, when we get to 500 or when I get 500 followers, you know, for every hundred, I send out some happy mail. So spread, spread, spread the word about the videos. When I get to 500, somebody else will get some happy mail. Oh, two North Carolinans. Wonder if y'all are close together. Y'all chat and let's see. <laughs> All right, let's get started on here. And I've already painted this. And if you get paint on this metal, uh, you can be really careful and try not to or you can be like me and always be in a hurry. But um, a Q-tip will take it right off. It comes right off of it. After it dries, you can just go through and wipe it right off. And so I don't worry about it until I'm finished. And then I'll just go wipe, wipe it off. 
I've got paint on the screw heads on the back. And see, it just comes right off. And we're not going to paint the back of this one tonight. Um, we're going to paint the back of the other one because I have it prepared. But I am going to go ahead and put the napkin on. So we need to get some Mod Podge going here. And I'm going to use my wide brush. For those of you that are newbies on here, the Painter's Event, if you'll go uh, go on down to my Facebook, I've got posts about it. Or you can go to my website, which is youngatheartcreations.com, and click on Events, and it will give you some more information about it. Our grand prize, door prize, will be a Cricut machine. And then we'll have other door prizes throughout the day. We'll have a photo booth. Your meals are included. So we're just going to have a fun day. Really looking forward to it. So, fingers crossed that it makes. If it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. We'll try again next year. Okay, so, and I've got, like I said, 470-something followers, but Facebook only reaches out to a small percentage of those. So, so many of my followers don't even know about the event. So, I'm counting on you guys for help in spreading it to all of your contacts so that they'll at least know about it. Okay, so I've got a pretty good amount on here. I don't want it just soaking wet with it, but I want to make sure that it's completely covered. It's going to get up here in the corner, and we'll have to do this a little differently right up here because this napkin doesn't, it won't go underneath the metal, so we'll have to cut a little piece to go on here. Now, your um, Mod Podge is always going to go on looking milky. It's going to look like you've poured... Elmer's glue on it. It's gonna be very white, very milky looking, but it always clears, uh, dries clear. And I know this is hard to see right now because it's white on white, but I'm just putting a uh, generous coat on it, not getting it just puddly, just enough to where that napkin will stick. You don't want it just gobbed on there. Just want it sticky. And I'm pressing it in pretty good. Okay, so that should do it for that. Now I'll lay my brush aside for just a second because I may need to put a little more glue on it. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to go just below the ridge of the clip. And I'm going to center it because I'm going to use the edges. Center it right. I'm just going to go right up to that edge. Just enough to where the white, white part of the clipboard doesn't show. I'm going to be very careful because it's very, very thin and you don't want to tear it. So you're just going to pat it down. I'm going to be careful rubbing because it, it will will tear because it's wet it's a napkin and it's wet all right and it seems like i need just a little more on this edge over here and you're going to have wrinkles that is normal so don't think oh no i've messed it up there's wrinkles everywhere that's very normal and then just take a plain soft chip brush and just pounce it on there. You just want to make sure it's really worked down in there. Not sure why that side just didn't get much on it. There we go. You want to make sure it's really good and pounced on that. Now you don't want to rub it. I do have a little roller that I also use sometimes. Let me grab that just to show you while that's kind of drying. Kind of helps work out some of the bubbles. Um, I got this one at Michael's. Hobby Lobby also carries them, I believe. Having a very good sale, but I have noticed 
Michael's is quite a bit more expensive than Hobby Lobby. Okay, I think that's down pretty good. Let's give it one more go over. Especially around those edges. Now, you could leave this white here, up here, and paint something. You could put like, um, if it were a teacher, you could put like Mrs. Savage, um, you know, or room whatever. Um, you could do something like that on it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and cover it completely. So the way we're gonna do that, that's what I do with my scissors over here. We're gonna cut the edges off just as close as we can, but you wanna be careful and not tear it because we are gonna use the edges. And then I'll show you what we're gonna do with these rough edges. You could do this for kitchen, wouldn't it be cute? They've even got them smaller than this, but wouldn't it be uh, cute to do, let's see what I've got in here. Y'all, this is my, while wow, that's drying a minute. This is my little stash of napkins <laughs> and it's growing. But that's what, when we talk about a napkin swap, that's what I mean, because you use it one, two, three, four napkins, and then you've got 20 or 30 napkins left of the same thing, and you don't want to use, uh, you don't really have a need for that many. Um, so we just take them when we get together, and we swap different uh, ideas together. But um, wouldn't this one be cute for a kitchen if you, do, if you have chickens? You could do it in chickens, and you could put your recipes or something like that on it. Uh, we've got... Um, you could even, for a teacher, wouldn't it be so, so cute to do one um, for every holiday. You could do do the teacher a Christmas one, a Valentine one, or a spring one. Uh, I like this one, too. This would be really cute to do for uh, a crafter, a painter, paint brushes. Wouldn't that be cute? I'm always using my clipboard that my friend made me. Um, always, especially at paint parties, I take it with me. Okay, so we wanna make sure this is good and dry, so let's go ahead and finish cutting around it. Let me bring you back down. How do you clean out the glue? Uh, the Mod Podge in water, I just clean it out in, in water, uh, just like I do my paint, and then warm, soapy water when I finish. I put it in water so that it doesn't dry out while I'm painting, and then just a little bit of warm, soapy water, and it just comes right out. All right, y'all, my cheeks are getting red it's a little warm up here today got my fan going but it's still a little warm all right so i'm just cutting along the edge hi denise all right let me bring you back down so you can see what we're doing just as close as your scissors will let you get you want to be careful if it's still pretty wet and not pull it off this would also be really cute for um, a nurse. You know, nurses use clipboards all the time. You could do something really cute with uh, nursing patterns. Secretaries. Okay, now as I'm cutting that, I can tell right on that edge, I need just a little more glue on that one because it was pulling up just a little bit as I was going around it. Not much, it's just right on that very edge, but I want to make sure that it's really stuck down. Okay, so we're going to use this that we just cut off to go on these edges. Y'all, I've been working on so much stuff and haven't been, been home for four days, so my little table's a little bit of a mess tonight. Plus, I had to move a lot of stuff around because the 
bathroom that we're having remodeled is on the other side of my craft room wall and everything was flying off of it because they were pouncing on it. Okay, so we're just going to marry this side here with this one. And that's another thing. You can take part of one napkin, part of another napkin. You can take parts, bits and pieces from several different napkins to make, like if you had a, this was real pretty, but you wanted some words. Uh, so you could take some words off of another napkin and instead of putting the napkin all the way here, you could glue the, the words over here. If it said like, um, be grateful or something, you could do that. So you can take from other napkins and just piece them together, kind of like a puzzle, I guess. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little more on here because that had begun to dry. All the way out to the edge. Make sure I've got the right side up here. You want your color side up. And I'm going to go all the way to the edge with it. Now I've got a tiny little white spot there that um, will show just a little bit, but I'm really not worried about that. It's so little. I could put a little piece in there, but I don't think it looks bad at all. And let's pounce it a little bit. Now when you're work doing this on a canvas, you want to make sure and really get it pounced in the canvas grooves. Okay, let's cut that off. We'll let it dry and let's do the other side. All right, this little end has some words on it saying where it was made or something, and I don't want that. So let's go ahead and put a little more glue on there. My Podge really is just a glue, a type of glue. It just dries clear. Right up to that. Okay, now this side, let me go right under that um, metal piece. Maybe too late to raise that other one. Let's see if we can get it under there. Maybe, but we can try. I think it's already too stuck. It is. But that side was down really hard and it would not let me go in it. So let's see if we can sneak a little piece under there. Since the other one is covered, let's see if it'll let us do that. It's not going to take much because it's I think we can. Let's see if we can get away with it. tiny little square there that we can overlap this other one just a little bit. All right, come on, work with me here. There we go. Okay, I think that is going to let us stick it in there. And then by the time you get it pounced down and all Mod Podge it on, you'll never know it. Okay, so let's cut the excess off. And I'm going to let it dry. Whoops, just a little bit more. And while I'm letting it dry, I'm going to put my brush that's got the, the Mod Podge on it in between my wet rag so that it doesn't dry out because I am going to use it again, but that keeps it from drying out. Get 
This is flying everywhere because I got my fan on. Okay, so we're done with that. Now, what I did on the back of it, not this one, I did put one coat on there. But, um, wash it off just a little bit. I've got a clear tablecloth, I mean, clear shower curtain over my tablecloth, so that keeps it from getting my tablecloth dirty and very easy to wipe off. And then sometimes I have a little uh, plastic piece that I lay down that I use as well. Okay, this is dry enough to go ahead and let me show you how to get these edges off. You can use just a regular piece of sandpaper. I have an oval one, but also you can use an emery board, just an emery board that you use on your fingernails. I keep these around all the time because I'm always using them. They're great for sanding little tight spots in wood that you can't get a regular sander to. You do not want to go up because that's gonna pull your napkin off. You wanna come down. So just come down on it. You want it to be drying for about five, 10 minutes before you do this part of it. Just right along that hard edge. Go ahead and do all of them, and then we'll set it aside and let it dry, and we'll go ahead and start painting on the other one. And again, I'm just using a, just a plain emery board. They come, I think, eight to ten to a package at Dollar Tree. I use them a lot. They have so many little things that, like my flowers, down in between the petals, sometimes it's hard to get those good sanded with your sander so I'll use these to get down in the, the grooves I was thinking about if our painters event does make if I do get enough uh, ladies signed up that we might do something Mod Podge something real simple I'm look, I look, started looking into that yesterday because it is really fun to do. It would also be a fun project for uh, like a teen class. Okay, that easy. Nice smooth edges. You do want to just kind of wipe your napkin off or the top of your surface because it does leave a little like just like sawdust on there okay that's drying nicely but I'm gonna set it aside and I would let that dry and then I would completely go over it and seal it I usually seal, seal it twice but I want it to be good good dry before I put the second coat on it because if you don't it tends to kind of pull the napkin up so I just make sure that it's good and dry. So I've got that under the fan, and let's go ahead and get started on this one. Now I've pulled out these colors because they were pretty close to the colors that are in this. I've dry brushed, and to dry brush, you just put, let me get my Mod Podge lid on there so it doesn't dry out. <coughs> okay, um, you use a chip brush, is what I use or just an old scruffy brush that you've got but chip brushes are really good you put the paint on it you just kind of pounce it in there and then get it off work it in real good but just kind of get it off and then no water and then you just streak it down streak it down back and forth until you get the consistency that you want you may not want it this much you can do it lighter the more you press the more you're gonna get so you could do this in any color combination. You could even do it all like all light green and then everywhere they touch, make it darker. So it gives it almost a little buffalo plaid look. 
So I chose the uh, green. We used um, Hauser Medium Green and then Deco and Deco Art and Deep Midnight Blue because that's pretty close to what was in the background of this napkin. So we're going to go with Wildberry and Cactus Flower. These are all Deco Art. But before I do that, I want to kind of place where my flowers are going to be. And I'm going to do that with white. Let me get some white going here. <clears throat> the flowers will they'll just show up so much better uh, with that white underneath them now this is a little bit rough I haven't treated it yet once you've painted on wood it's going to be a little bit rough your first coat um, so you want to take a paper sack or wax paper like out of your kitchen and just crumble it up and just rub it across it. Not the side with the ink on it. You want it plain because that ink sometimes will rub off. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and rub those two little screw heads some more while I've got this out. And there it is. All nice and clean. Then these make cute gifts. Okay, so I'm going to take a... Let's use it as we're just base coating on this. This is a number 12 flat, flat across. I'm going to dampen my bristles just a little bit and then just kind of dry them off. And let's just start placing some flowers. And we're just going to do our simple, simple basic flowers. So let's do one. Oh, we'll do a pretty big one right here. Might take just a couple of coats on it because that blue is really dark. Get some petals going here. Kind of hard for you to see right now because it is a lot of white in that background. Let's do maybe a small one here. Let's do, let's go ahead and do a big one here too. We'll just go over that one a little bit. I had not really thought this through. I'm just, just going for it. And then we'll, once we put the actual color on there, it'll all start coming together for us. You could do a circle of flowers. That would be really cute. Just so many ways you could do it. Okay, let's put a second coat over here. Now, I do want to be careful on um, underneath because on this one I've already put the napkin on, so I don't want to get paint all over it. But we have already Mod Podge the front of this one, so it, if we do get paint on it, it should wash you know right off. But I don't want any extra work if I don't have to have it. Okay, so we've got some flowers down there. Let's maybe put a couple of small ones out here. And I'm just twirling my brush around. Just making some little petals and then filling it in. Now 
That one's a little bit larger, but that's fine. Cover that blue up a little bit. I know y'all probably saw the post of the we actually have kept all three grand dogs. We actually have five, but two of them are outdoor that are from Oklahoma, but the other three are inside dogs and um, they were all going on trips and so they each needed help with them. So Phoebe's the last one that I stayed with. Now we do still have Myla and Jennifer's in Montana. Um, but Phoebe just had knee surgery. Her little knee kept popping out of place so they had to have surgery on it, and for 12 weeks, she is not supposed to put any weight on it. And so now we're, they've already had four weeks, so they've got eight more weeks to go. And let me tell you, she's feeling so much better, and it is so hard to keep her from walking on her little leg. She can walk on it long enough to go to potty. But she's not supposed to jump on up and down on the beds or the couch and it's so hard she just doesn't understand you know why can't I play just like a child okay I think that's probably going to be enough of that undercoat one more down here Oops, I almost tried to stick that in the Mod Podge. You could put a name across here. Just so many little things that you could do. Okay, so let me draw that right quick so we can go ahead and get a first coat of the color on one of them. Raise up here. I'm just drying it a little bit. In the last couple of seconds, I cool it down. I have a cool button on my uh, hair dryer. And so I cool it down because I don't want to paint on hot a hot surface. It just doesn't do real well. Okay, so let's start with our Wildberry. Let's go ahead and get that. Hi, Wendy. So glad y'all are on. I have missed you guys. It's been a while since I've been on here. Um, but let's get down here and get back to business here. Okay, this is Deco Art Wildberry, a really pretty color. And like I said, I didn't think about a pattern or anything. We're just kind of kind of wing it tonight. Beautiful color. Okay, so I'm going to use that same flat brush. I've washed it out. And let's just start going over this large one down here. Beautiful color. I'm going to feather out around the edges. I don't want to come up like this because it'll make a big old blob and we'll get it on the back of your brush. First coat always looks a little yuck, streaked, depending on the color that you're using. This one will take two coats. But while these first coats are drying, we can um, Mod Podge the other one. Put the second coat on it because it'll be plenty dry by then. Okay, see how streaked that is? It will definitely take two coats of that. Let's go ahead and put that same color 
up here just to kind of tie it in. Basically, anything that looks like a petal is going to work. Now, there are much more detailed ways you can do flowers. And um, Donna Dewberry, look her up, D-E-W-B-E-R-R-Y. She invented the uh, one-stroke method. She does beautiful, beautiful, beautiful flowers. And um, a whole different technique. Okay, let's do a yellow. This is Banana Cream Deco Art. So we'll go right under this one. The Wild Berry. I really like the Banana Cream. It's just a soft yellow, but it really covers well. Not only had the little dog Phoebe just had surgery and trying to deal with all that, but they just moved into their new home, so her whole routine, her surroundings, everything so different, but she is such a little trooper. So we just sat, I worked all weekend on business, I didn't get to paint, so I worked on the business end of my business and worked on uh, several things, several new ideas to paint for you guys, several ideas. I came up with a game that we will do at the painter's event if it makes. That will be really, really fun. Okay, let's see what we get. I'm gonna get this package of napkins out so I don't have to keep turning it over and see what colors. So I can kind of pull from the colors that way. So we've got our dark pink. Let's do, um, gotta get some turquoise in there. This is spa blue, my, one of my favorite blues. And let's do that one here. So clean my brush out. This is one of the brushes um, in the packets that I ordered for you guys for the live event. So it's working pretty well. And this flower is gonna be behind these two, so I'm going around these petals. I could go over the petals and make these two behind, but we're gonna do it this way. Pretty already. Okay, and let's do another blue one here. And then we'll do some smaller ones. And we'll get some detail in them here in just a second. Right around that petal. All right, well, let's see. That will be my color for that one. Let's go ahead and 
ahead and do a let's do some small get some of that navy in there let's do a couple of flowers up here so let's go ahead and base coat them in the white and we're going to do a little bit different flower we're going to bring the petals in And this is a filbert brush. It's oval on the end, so it's a filbert. This is a number two. Depends on the size you want your flower. And I'm just pressing down, pulling up. Pressing down, pulling up. Okay, let's put another little one over here. And since they're going to be navy, we don't have to put a lot of white on it. These are this is a very, very easy way to make daisies. If we were doing it on a different color background, you could make daisies. You could make little sunflower looking. But I'm just pressing down, coming into the center, and pulling up as I get there. And then just filling in that middle. So let's go ahead and dry that white right quick and we'll get some navy on there. And let's put, we'll go ahead and load it both with the navy and with the white and I'll show you that technique. So I'm going to load my filbert brush. Whatever color I want to be prominent to show most, I'm going to put on the bottom. That sounds like just the opposite of what you want. So we're going to put some navy on the bottom. Turn it around. Put some white on the top. And we're going to go back over our flowers. That one's still just a little bit wet, so let's work on this one over here. And you're going to get a two-tone. And I'm just reloading every couple of petals. Navy's on the bottom. If I did it just the opposite, the white would be mostly on the bottom and the navy would come to the top. I'm sorry, if I did put the white on here, the white would come more to the top. I said that just the opposite. Okay, so bottom, top. And we'll put a yellow center. Okay, let's go here and work on this one. This is deep midnight blue. It's a really pretty color. Press down, pull up. The more you press, the larger the petals will be. It's a little bit different flower, and we'll put some of that yellow in the middle. So let's get those dry right quick. And with that same brush, 
let's just go ahead and put us some yellow since our yellow is still wet. Just to give us a center. And I'm not doing a perfectly round center. Just kind of feathering it in there. Might take a second coat. Okay, then let's go ahead and put our second coat on our flowers and then we'll do the Mod Podge on the other napkin. So I don't want this paint to dry out before we need it. Really pretty, pretty color. Making sure to get off the edge there. Almost reminds me of watermelon color. All of our kiddos are coming over Saturday the 17th to celebrate the July birthdays. Kiddos and grandkids are going to make homemade ice cream, vanilla, and cookies and cream. They love for me to make homemade ice cream when we get together. So I've got to go to the store this week and get everything to make it. Now the yellow's still wet, so I want to be careful not get my arm in it. I did not wear an apron tonight. Because I didn't think this would be messy enough that I would need to. But ever since the incident where the leg came off and I got paint all over me live, I said I was going to be wearing an apron all the time. But I guess it just depends on what I'm wearing. What shirt I'm wearing. Okay, let's put another coat on our yellow. I'm going to wash that brush out really good. Now we've only got one yellow flower, but the yellow centers on these really offset it. I mean, give it, um, pull it together, pull out the yellow in this one. So I think we're good on it. Now, Banana cream, or banana, is it what it's called? Yeah, banana cream. This is not the color I use for my sunflowers. I do sometimes highlight with it, but I use a little bit brighter, more of a school bus primary yellow for my sunflowers. Let's go ahead and put a little more yellow in the centers of those blue ones. Okay, now let's get a second coat on our spa blue. So we're actually really doing two projects tonight because we're working on two different pieces. Just letting the brush do all the work just twirling it around really fanning it out to get good coverage loading it pretty good and I don't mind on these if I get a little ridge at the end I kind of like it when it's when I'm doing petals 
typically I, I don't. I said, oh, don't get a ridge. But when I'm doing flowers, I kind of like a little ridge on them. And let's go ahead and put right behind this flower too. So it looks like it's behind it. Okay, let's do this little one here. For the painter's event, we will be doing a fall and a Christmas project. Go down and look at my Facebook feed and you'll see what we'll be painting. Might throw a Mod Podge, either a Mod Podge project or another painting project in there. I'm not sure. Well, just have to see. I'm going to use the rest of this coral paint up just to kind of cover it. I can still see those dry brush strokes pretty good through that color. So let's go one more time over it since I've still got plenty of paint left out here. Such a pretty color. As soon as the contractors get done with our bathroom and painting our upstairs, I'm going to do some work out in my garage on some of the uh, little furniture and a few projects. So I will be taking you out there because the projects are too big to do in the house. So we'll be moving out there, hopefully, if it's cool enough. Okay, let's just go ahead and use this blue up. Get right down in there where I just have one coat on it. Hobby Lobby has still, still not opened up their community room for me to start the classes there. So I am waiting on that. And I'm waiting on a manager to call me back from Joann's. They also, uh, also have that where you can do that. Okay, we're gonna set that aside just a minute and let it dry on its own. Let's go ahead and do the Mod Podge on this. Okay, we, ooh, tornado watch till tomorrow afternoon. I haven't even looked at our weather. I don't know if we are or not. They have it even with Tampa tonight, which will be even with us. Oh, well, y'all stay alert. We, we're in Tornado Alley, so I'm very, very aware of how we had a tornado about five years ago come through here, destroyed so many homes within just a couple of blocks of us. We didn't get any damage, but there were other homes literally just two to three blocks from us that were wiped off their foundations. And uh, some of them are still rebuilding and still trying to get, get things back to where they were. All right, so we've got this. It's, it's good and dry now. So let's go ahead and put some Mod Podge over it. I did not get my brush wet. I just had it in, uh, in between my washcloth. I am going to go ahead and wet it just a little bit but then I'm gonna get all that moisture out. But I just want those bristles to come apart again. Because remember what, like Miss Tracy says, what is the purpose of a napkin? What does it do? Somebody comment, what is the purpose of a napkin? Hi, Melinda. Hello, Karen. Also has upgraded to, ooh, to a hurricane. Oh, so scary. They would not have to tell me twice to leave if it was a hurricane. I would be out of there so quick. Okay, 
And so let's bring it back down. I'm just getting some Mod Podge on my brush. All right, somebody comment, what is the purpose of a napkin? All right, let's go ahead and get started on this. I've got a gnat in here trying to get into the program. And I'm not going to rub hard. I'm just going to place it on there. But you want to make sure you get every inch covered. Now remember, there's nothing on the back of this one yet. I'm not rubbing hard because it is not sealed. So it starts raising up a little bit. That's normal, but you want to be careful. Okay, so the purpose of a napkin is to absorb moisture. So that's what this is doing. It's paper and it's absorbing the moisture from this. So it is gonna raise up a little bit. So you want to be careful. You don't wanna be rough with this at all. Be sure and get the little spots up there that you got. Uh, that we had to put that extra little piece in. You don't want this piece, I overlapped this piece onto the big one. So I don't want to come up this way because it's going to get, it might bring that napkin up. But if wet, anything wet is going to make it until we get this first coat on here, is going to make it raise because it's just one ply of napkin and you can rip it when the, uh, the little bubbles start. Now if we did this before it really dried good and we set it aside and we let it dry, but if we had done this before it had dried, we would be ripping it. And I'm just feathering out on the edges. So just got a big blob there on the my table. Gently, gently, gently. Now with contact paper or scrapbook paper, I don't think it would bubble like the napkins do. Okay, I think I've got it really covered well enough for the first coat, and then I'm going to go back and put a second coat on it. I'm going to go ahead and do the edges just to seal that underneath that napkin. Second coat after this completely dries is much easier because you don't have to be quite as careful because it's already sealed. I'm not going up, I'm going just patting it on because I don't want to pull that napkin up. These would be cute on blocks of wood. We are going to do something really special with some um, paper that I got, some scrapbook paper. I've just got to get them designed and cut but it will be something so, so easy. And I think you're really going to like it. Christmas. It'll be Christmas. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside again. I've got it completely covered. Okay, so it's real milky, but again, it will dry clear. A little spot there that I didn't get. It's going to be shiny. So if you see a spot that's not shiny until it's dry, you'll know. And it dries pretty quick. Okay, so super, super milky right now. And very, very wrinkly, but that's normal. So I'm going to, now on this one, the second coat, the first coat, remember we pounced it down real good? I'm, I don't want to do that on this because you could, um, I've never done it, 
but I'm afraid that it might damage it. So I'm not going to do that. I didn't do it on the other one either. Okay, so we'll set that aside, let it dry, let me clean my mess up, and let's get back to our flowers. I am going to go ahead and put this in water and let it be sitting. We will do another coat, but I'm going to let it go ahead and be, because I, had, I did, it got out from under my rag and it got a little dry. Okay, so here's our flowers. Now on these, we want to go, and I could have done a dark teal and then gone in with the lighter teal. There's just so many different ways that you can do it on, on the colors, on the color schemes. But let's go ahead and do this one first. So we're gonna go with the light pink and white. I need some more white because I got navy all in that white. And we're just gonna go through and do some, just some little simple comma strokes, strokes that look like little number threes. So with that, for that, I'm gonna use a round brush. Let me get a good round brush over here. Let's see what I've got over here. I got brushes everywhere and I've been using them for different projects. I'm trying tonight to use the brushes that you will have in your kit when we um, have the painter's event. I also like to use a liner brush to do this. So we might on some of these go with a liner brush also. You don't have a liner brush in your kit. Well, a, a small round, but it's not really a liner. Okay, so I've got this round. It's about a two, three, maybe. Not really sure. The, it's worn off of it. Okay, so let's go with um, the cactus flower pink. That's really pretty. Not going to take a lot, but we can always add more. So I'm going to start up here so that I don't have my hand arm over this one at the bottom. And let's just make our center here. This brush is peeling off. And then let's just go around and do just commas here and there. I got into the white a little bit there. And I'm just going to kind of roll it out. And I'm doing them in a shape like the petal, just kind of rounded. They're honestly just comma strokes. If you were had your pen or pencil and were making commas, that's all this is. Okay, let's go ahead and do the large one. Now this one, I'm going to make the center like it's facing out this way. And we'll make it kind of down here because it's going off of the board. This is really relaxing. The only reason you don't hear Myla, the other puppy, barking is because I put the gate up. Otherwise, she would want to be right here in my lap. Used to, that would be okay, but she's gotten so big, it's all I can do to hold her in my lap. But she still thinks she's this little bitty lap dog. And she weighs over, over 20 pounds. Okay, now for the blue, uh, over the spa blue, we're going to do, this is Apple Barrel, and it's Car Caribbean. 
Caribbean, Caribbean, however you pronounce it. So we'll use that. And on this one, we'll do some little, oh, I guess we'll call them kind of three shapes. And we'll make this one right side up. Ooh, pretty. Okay, now these, I did one stroke on this one. I'm doing two. It's like a, a three. It's kind of the way I used to make seagulls when I was in um, art class in elementary school. For the center, I'm still just doing the two commas. Okay, well, let's do this one down here. This apple barrel is just a little bit thinner. Okay, remember this flower is behind the other two. <laughs> Flake off of the handle, see how it's coming apart? <laughs> Everything's, the paint's coming off the handle, it keeps flaking off in there. Now for the yellow, try to decide if I want to go gold. Let's see what the gold looks like. This is metallic splendid gold deco art, very gold. Let's see what it looks like on this yellow one. If it doesn't look good, we'll go with a different color. Maybe too close to the yellow, but we'll see. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. I'm going to put a second coat on it. I may go in here with some um, harvest gold too. If it does give it just a little bit of glimmer. You could do this um, with patriotic flowers. Red, white, and blue. Just so many things you could put on these. Okay. All right, now let's go in with some white. But let me get my harvest gold here. This is actually mustard Give it a little more on that yellow. I'm going to use my liner brush and just add a few more smaller in this mustard yellow. Just to kind of give it a little more depth. 
Okay, also with that mustard yellow, I'm gonna take the end, the wood end, end with that mustard yellow and add a few little dots here on this, on these blue ones, just to give the uh, some statement in there. Barely touching. Okay, so let's go through with some white now. I'm gonna use that same brush that's peeling off. And we're gonna go through with some white on each one of them. We'll start up here on this one. And I'm trying to not put them right under each other. I'm trying to do them kind of randomly. So they're not just like right in a row. Let's put some yellow. Go ahead. While we've got it on our tip, we'll put it down here at the bottom one too. Yellow is almost too dry. And for the center on this one, we're going to go with that mustard yellow. And we'll put some white in there in just a second, too. All right, let's finish adding some white to our little flower over here. And our yellow. Oops, put a little bit of that pink in there because I'd gotten pink in it earlier. So is anybody working on craft shows or paint parties? What do you got going on? I've got a paint party at the end of this month. We're gonna be doing a couple of new techniques. I've got some things I'm gonna try this week, next week, that I'm um, probably gonna get on here and just wing it <laughs> and we'll see how they turn out. I've gotten a little brave, I'm not sure why, but on just trying things for the first time in front of you that I've never done before. Okay, let's get some white in here. Okay, they're starting to look a little more like flowers. Now this, we did the threes. So maybe at the top of those petals there. I'm not pressing down real hard. And if you use the liner brush, it would make an even different looking stroke. Okay, 
last one with the white and then we're going to put just a little bit of black in there. Okay, so remembering the napkin that we started out with, we pretty much got, except for the turquoise, we went a little more turquoise than this had in it, um, but that's, that's okay because it's not right on top of it clashing. So let's do, let's do a couple of leaves. Now this one's starting to dry. All that milkiness is starting to disappear. It's going to be really pretty, pretty, pretty colors. If you didn't watch the first, be sure and go back and uh, replay. Watch the replay because I showed you what we're probably going to do next week. At least in the next couple of weeks, but with the Dollar Tree um, heart that I had gotten. Get some darker green here. Okay, so we're using Hauser Medium Green. Um, oh, I'm sorry. This one is not Hauser. This is Anita's. And it is all-purpose paint. And it's Artichoke Heart Green for the leaf. And then... We're going to go with, um, let's go with Deco Art Hauser Dark Green to just kind of give it some contrast. Haven't even decided where we're going to put any leaves yet, but we're going to put some. So let's go with um, that number 12 flat that we did our flowers with. And let's see if we can put some leaves in here somewhere. So I'm going to load it on both both sides. I mean both paints at the same time. I'm going to rub it in there. Let's see if we can get some leaves going out here. Well, let's put one right here. I'm going to up on my chisel edge. Okay, then I'm just going to go flat and turn it up. Get down right below that petal because the leaf is behind it. Putting my dark to the outside, so I'm flipping my brush over and then twirling it around. Okay, we'll let that dry just a second and then we'll put a second coat on it. So I'm loading it in both greens, the dark green and the light green. And then just working it in. Alright, let's put one coming out this way. And I want my dark to the outside. Twisting it up. I'm going to load again. I'm flipping my brush over to get the dark color to the outside. 
and then just right back up to that point. And just fill it in. Having both colors in there just kind of gives it some dimension and depth. Twist it up to a point. And I'll go back in here and fill in a little bit of that with the um, with a little line of brush or the round brush. My daughter, Jennifer, and our oldest granddaughter, they are in Montana right now. And that's why I've got Myla, or we've got Myla. But my daughter promised each of the grandchildren, that, um, which are her nieces and nephews, that for their senior gift, when they graduate high school, she will take them anywhere in the United States that they want to go. So she already took one to California. Uh, Dylan a couple of weeks ago because they're only 15 days apart so she had two trips back to back <laughs> but she's taken Savannah to Montana and she sent us pictures today uh, they were out hiking somewhere and um, came across a grizzly bear actually it looked like a black bear to me so but it's a pretty big bear <laughs> so um, I wasn't sure how close they were to it I'm not sure I want to know but anyway, so that's that's what they were doing. I said, you don't tell mama these things until you get back and you're safe and sound. Okay, let's put just a little bit of black in these flowers just to make them pop a little bit. I don't want much. And I think on the other one, um, the other clipboard, I'll do some more um, this style flower, some, uh, some different ones. Okay, so I've got my bristles wet. I've changed to a liner brush. And we're just going to put just a little bit, not much. You wouldn't think about adding black, but it does make the other colors really pop but I'm using the smaller brush because black can overpower if you're not careful just here and there I haven't even reloaded the brush Okay, I'm going to reload. A little piece of fuzz on it. So I'm just pretty much just the tip is all that I'm doing. And then we need to put our veins in our leaves. one. I'm 
I'll put some white dots in there around the stamen too. Okay, so let's put some white dots on the centers. Just to kind of brighten it up a little bit. sure what these would what um price wise these would sell for probably i would sell them for oh probably 10 or 12 dollars depending what's on them how much work it's taken my cost in them Okay, let's put some veins on our flowers. Let me go ahead and fill in around that petal. I gotta be careful, all these dots are wet now. Whoops, that one had way too much water. Dry that brush off a little bit. So we're going in with that lighter green and just gonna fill, clean up around this petal. And then I'm going to pull in some of that darker green because that is at the base of it and it would be darker. I saw Dietra where, if you're still on here, I saw all of the bee, bumblebee and stuff that you have been cutting out. I cannot believe your cutting skills. Just honestly not sure how you do it. I mean, I cut on a bandsaw all the time, but I do not have that skill. Okay, well, so let's put some veins here. to clean up around that petal just a little bit. And on the other side. Now, we can float just a little bit of white on those leaves. So what I'm going to do is kind of dirty my brush up here in that lighter green and get just, just a little tip <clears throat> of that white on here. And let's say the light's coming from this direction. We'll do just a little bit on the tip. Way too wet. Just to kind of make this side a little bit lighter. A little bit on that yellow. Okay, and then we'll go back over our line there. I kind of got off on that line. 
same thing over here. I should have done this first before I put the vein in there. Okay, so let's remark our vein. Got ahead of myself there. And over here. back in with it dark clean up sorry I didn't realize that was probably out of camera okay so let's make some little stems here or some little vines because these flowers just look like they're kind of floating there And we'll put some leaves on them and we will call it done. Now you could do on the back of this, you could do a solid color on it. You could um, do it white and then just barely dry brush it um, with a, a color or you could make it look like the planks. Um, there's just so many different ways that you could do it. All right, well, let me see if I've got my little round brush over here. You could use a filbert or a round, either one. Since I've got the round out, I'm just gonna use the, um, go ahead and use it. Just gonna load the, the tip of it in that lighter green, and we'll make us some little, um, oops, I forgot a, one of the vines at the bottom there going from here to here so let's put a vine right there and then let's make us some leaves And I'm just pressing down, lifting up, pressing down, lifting up. And we'll add a little bit of white or a little bit lighter green to it to kind of brighten it up a little bit because on this dark background, it's a little bit hard to see. Press down, pull up, same way you would do the flower petal. Down and up. much softer green so it's not white white it's green but it's aloe deco aloe so it's much lighter than what we just put on and that should give it a little bit of a highlight or we could even go let's actually do that let's go with 
This is a uh, ceram coat and it's apple green. Almost a lime green. I haven't used my ceram coat paints in a long, long time. Let me dry those leaves just a tad. Now let's put just a little bit of this uh, this lime green in there, and I think that's going to really pull them out. Kind of on the top where the light would be shining. Could just go ahead and do almost the whole thing in that. Let's just do that because that is pretty dark. Under underlay is pretty dark for it, so we'll just add a little more of this. Okay, that's brightening it up. Yeah, let's do the same thing over here. And let's go ahead and even. Almost just dry brush some of that on here. To our other little ones. Still leaving some of that green, dark green around the edges. That's a pretty close match. I mean, we've got pretty much all the colors. And again, you could take wood letters or just hand letter it on here, um, the name or whatever you you know you wanted to do um, on there. But that's the front, and it is larger than the notebook paper, a little bit larger, so they will see it around the edges. That pretty color, and then when they're holding it, let's pull back up here. When uh, they're holding it in their classroom or whatever, the everybody else will see this side of it. And then once I get it Mod Podge, that's going to make those colors pop even more. So, pretty colors, pretty colors, pretty colors. So this one will be really easy with those blues and those corals again. Uh, may do a little bit different flower. These are real loose flowers on here. So we may do uh, something like that and just really fill it in. I don't know yet. I haven't decided yet. So I've still got to paint the back and get it uh, solid on there. But that didn't take us super long. Well, I guess almost an hour and a half. But anyway, so we got it done, though. <laughs> that's the thing. So that's what I'm working on right now are some clipboards. I've got to go get some more. Again, the... Um, what I did with the Dollar Tree heart, for those of you that have just gotten on or came in late, um, thank you, Cindy. And um, that is what, oh, Karen, thank you so much. So that's what I got. Didn't get to use them because the party was canceled because of COVID. So I turned it around, and this is what I did with them. So we, uh, we are going to paint this together. I'm not sure which Tuesday, but I may get back on here in between Tuesdays and do it uh, right now. I mean, uh, in the next week or so, because I've had to be off. I've also got something we're going to do with this. I've painted so many of my rooms uh, in my house with this, but we're going to do something fun that I've never done before. 
so I'm not sure how it's going to work out yet. We're just going to see. Um, I'm getting more and more spontaneous and brave on what I'm doing on here. So we're going to use this uh, to do something. I've got a cute, cute set of Christmas trees that we're going to do. Um, right now, they're just in my head. I've got to get them on paper and get a pattern and get them cut out. And I'll show you what we're going to do with those. I am looking for some canvases um, because I've got some paper that I want to do some things with uh, with canvases. Um, I've just got so many things. I need to get on here every day, don't I, <laughs> to do this with you. So I may hop on during the day. I don't know. Right now, just between contractors and my, my house is uh, completely out of sync. My dining room table's shoved up against one wall. The garage is just full of stuff because all those projects I was going to do, they've been out in the garage working. Uh, they've needed the garage to cut things and this and that. So I haven't been able to get out into my garage either, but we will. I've got so many things that I'm just cannot wait to paint with you and show you. So Please, 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 uh, if you don't mind, I am at 471 followers. So if you will um, just spread the love, spread these videos, that's what it's going to take because Facebook does not spread them to everybody. Like, I've got 471 followers. So you would think when I post something that Facebook would um, send that out to all of my followers. That's not the way it works. Um, this percentage that actually are reached is very very small compared to what you have if you have a hundred thousand people a very small amount of those people percentage of those people are actually going to be sent these posts and things so it's up to everybody to kind of spread it on your own and spread it um, you know around to everyone I love the more the merrier on here and so I'm almost at 500 so when I get to 500 uh, we'll send out some more happy mail Peggy Wilson um, I did draw your name this morning for some happy mail, so please send me your um, address and I will get something in the mail to you. I will post what I have sent to her afterwards because I don't want to ruin the surprise for her uh, when she opens it. So we'll do that in the next week or so. I'll let you see what, she, uh, what I'm going to send her. I love sending out happy mail. I could probably go bankrupt because I would love to send happy mail every single day <laughs> to everyone. But... Um, Please spread the word about the event. Again, so many on here, maybe a hundred of you have probably seen about the event because it's just not sent out to everyone. I've been handing out flyers. I've been sending out emails. Um, I've been going on Instagram. And so I have been advertising like crazy, um, but I do need your help. So if you would do that, we'll see. We've got till August the 1st uh, to see if we can get it to make. So if you don't mind letting everybody know, again, if you are the first one to get five people to sign up and put your name as the one that referred them on the registration form, you will get uh, that big sunflower I showed you in the beginning. I will send you that. Uh, the grand prize will be the Cricut machine. So if for every person, whether you come or not, for every person, I'm sorry, on this one, you do have to be there. On the other one, if you get five people to register, you do not have to come. If you're the first one to get five people to register and you can't come, but you purchased uh, for a gift for somebody, or you just let them know and they come, or a group of church ladies or whatever, co-workers or whatever, and you get five people to sign up, then you don't have to be here. You will get that flower. For the cricket, however, the door prize for uh, drawing for that, you will have to be a part of the party, uh, of the event. But for every, you will get a ticket in there automatically just for being at the event, for registering. But for every person that you get to register, you get an extra ticket for the drawing on that uh, cricket machine. So if you get 10 or 15 people to, uh, you know, to register or you, um, you know, purchase a gift for somebody to come and then you get five more... If you get 10 people, that's 10, that's, that'll be 11 tickets for you because your ticket and then the other 10 that you got to register. So that's a huge chance to, rent a, uh, to win a Cricut machine. So I've got lots of things in the plans for that. But again, if it does not make, you will get a full refund, <clears throat> you know, if it does not. And a lot of the reasons that I'm hearing that uh, we haven't gotten uh, our full requirement yet that we do need is because I'm not close to an airport. The event place, the venue is not close to an airport. I'm like an hour to an hour and a half away from Dallas. So um, that's one of the things and that it's not in a hotel so that you can't 
stay in the hotel and be at the same place, the same venue. So those are a few things that are, you know, causing some of the delays for people to register. But I did do it as a one day, uh, hoping that those that are close enough, because we have a lot of people uh, that are in the Painter's Clubhouse with Tamara Bennett that we've discovered live so close to us. And then so many of you that are local uh, that it, you wouldn't have to have a to, uh, hotel. It's just a one-day event that it's within driving distance for you to spend the day. And so that was my thinking was that if you're close enough to be within driving distance, um, you would not have to have hotel costs. And I was able to keep the cost down doing just a one-day for you. If it were a two-day, it would be over $200 for you. So it's $135. That includes the, all the painting projects that we'll be doing. That includes two full meals, all of your goodies that you'll be good, uh, getting, the door prizes that I'll be supplying. I'm not getting those donated. I am paying for those. So um, that $135 is, I'm not going to be making much money on it. Put it that way. It's not a money maker. It's just to get everybody together. So anyway, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so, so much for being on here. My mom is doing great. She was on here earlier, Cindy. And she is doing really well. In fact, Saturday is her birthday. I won't tell you how old she's going to be. I would be proud of it, but um, I'll let her tell you if she's still on here. But um, So I'm going to go spend the whole day with her. We're going to do some things around her house and maybe go out to lunch. I'm not sure. So I'm gonna, Saturday is her day, whatever she wants to do. I know she's got a little bit of wallpapering that she wants me to do in the house. I may get on live while we're doing that. So um, I'll let you know. But anyway, I'm sure I'll see you before then. I'll be back on here because I've got so many little projects that I can't just wait till every Tuesday and do it. Uh, but we'll be doing some Christmas things. It's only 25 Mondays until Christmas, guys. It is, it's going to be here before we know it. But thanks again. This is what we did tonight. And uh, I'll paint the other one. I'll make it on here live tomorrow and finish the other one. I'm not sure how I'm going to paint it yet, but we may get on here live. But here's what we did tonight. There's so many different ways that you can do it, but... Again, I didn't have a pattern or anything, just started painting on it, so <laughs> we, we made it through it. You guys have a wonderful night. Thank you so, so much for being on here and being patient with me not being able to be on here. So I enjoyed it very much. Good night.